stuff like something like this has been remastered and done from the original files so there's a lot of kind of misconception whether some records are like will sound better or not sound better but um like this is mastered from the original analog tape so you're basically getting you know the original other records then um for instance the replacements you don't know it's just you know being reissued whether it's taken from the original files we don't know you know that's the thing and with a lot of new vinyl they don't actually tell you with what's original and what's not original but a lot of people will just buy the original albums anyway out of nostalgia they want actually the originals teenagers are probably one of my most like uh, active customers probably like 16 plus get a lot of older men then as well who are like original onies has to be first pressings has to be like matrix number blah 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 and then you get other kids who come in they don't care what if it's an original remaster whatever they just want the music like I, I use Spotify and different streaming services every day when I'm traveling and stuff you know and if anything it's actually probably made me buy more records because I, like, I listen to a couple of songs off an album like it and then I'll buy it on vinyl I honestly just think there's two kinds of music good and bad I don't care what format it's on really like I'll just buy music as I enjoy it you know but like stuff like this the old blues and stuff you know it's like what 1933 to 35 you're not going to get that in download you know and it's like that stuff I'm not really bothered whether it's a reissue or whatever I just want the music much better musician yeah. he is an actor, an actor. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. see you then, see you then. take care I've been buying records for 45 years since I was seven yeah. Uh, started buying all the chart stuff, you know, Slade, Sweet, Gary Glitter, dare we say that. Uh, I buy them from shops like this, which is brilliant, and I buy them online. I buy quite a lot of stuff from sort of private sales. I've, I've got lots of CDs, and I buy stuff if it comes out, like compilations mainly. I'll buy them, and then I'll listen to them and try and buy the original singles of some of them. A lot of the, like, American Garage and stuff like that, that I'm never going to own on single because they're daft money. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy reissued stuff if I'm never going to have an original kind of a thing. If there's something that I can hang on for, then you know, I'll, I'll hang on, but no, I'll buy reissues as well if needs be. A shop like this is ideal for me because it covers everything. Um, no, I think Cork's doing all right. Cork's doing okay, yeah. Uh, well, my name's Dan, and uh, I've been buying records for about 11 years, so I think it was about 2006 I started. I actually buy a lot of CDs just because, like, I drive, like, so that's where actually I get a lot of my listening done. And then, uh, yeah, like, streaming services, Spotify, um, I'd usually, like, use those kind of platforms when I'm travelling, like, I suppose. Yeah, like, when it comes to vinyl, I'd say I'm probably more of a collector, like, you know, um, particularly just because, like, you know, I don't buy vinyl like I'd usually buy a vinyl or like a record if it was something that I was like really into or if I came across something that I would consider like quite rare or whatever like so definitely like a collector. I'd definitely be more likely to take a chance on um on seven inches. I actually like buying seven inches a lot because like it's just like a lot less of a commitment like because like you're only parting with like two or three euros like most of the time like so um yeah usually I take a leap of faith or eight with like the seven inches you yeah. know. So the first one I brought up was Talking Heads, Remain in Light. Actually, my sister's boyfriend bought it for me. And uh, I kind of found it interesting because he doesn't actually have a record player. And he was basically like, oh, I really want to go record shopping. Like, so he was kind of like, I'll just buy a few records for Dan. So I kind of felt like that for me, like this record represents like how like the process of buying records is sometimes a lot more enjoyable than like the actual consumption of the music, like, you know. So this one is of the Plastic Ono Band and uh, kind of like the reason why I brought this was because like I bought a second hand right and uh, there's like a sticker on the back that says like EJ Corvette 
And like I had no idea what that was. At, like obviously at the time I didn't even pay attention to it. Like when I was buying it, but uh, like I looked it up when I got home, and uh, it was actually like a department store in New York that closed in like nineteen eighty. Like you know, and like I kind of think it lended to like me enjoying the record, enjoying finding the record. Just the fact that like you know this was in New York in the eighties, and like how did it get here? Like you know, Bunker Vinyl would be a, a place I'd buy a lot of records in. Uh, plugged, which has now reopened above the roundies, so that's a great thing. And uh, yeah, records and relics then as well. Lastly, would be a place uh, I'd be likely to pick up a couple of records. Record shops have struggled a lot, like in the last couple of years, and that like, and you know, like for us as like consumers or whatever or collectors, like, you know, there's not many record shops like for us to enjoy. So like, it's definitely like, like the record shop owners and the buyers like depend on each other, like you know. There's two sides to it, like, you know, so obviously on one hand, in terms of music between digital and analog, since the internet's come in and like streaming services and stuff, like bands aren't making money. So like, you know, they haven't been able to make a living off it. But like at the same time, music's so readily available. I probably heard bands today that I would have never heard 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Because like they're on the other side of the world. They're not very big. So like there's kind of two sides to it. Like, you know, there's good and the bad. Like.